Good morning, everyone. I am Roman Vershenin, and I will teach you a course in undergraduate probability. The prerequisite to this course is just calculus. You just need to know how to differentiate and integrate. However, to fully enjoy this course, it would be good if you know also limits and series. It should, you should also be familiar with basic operations on sets, such as intersection and union. If you would like to, if you do not know that, or you would like to have a little refresher on set operations, then stop this video now and go to the link that's provided uh, for a little refresher. Check it out and then come back. This course has a website, the links to which is also included. And now let's start. The first problem of this class is the birthday problem. Imagine that you are in a class with 60 people, let's say. What is the probability that someone in this class has the same birthday as you? Let's write this down. What is the probability? that someone, one or more people in your class of 60 students has the same birthday as you. What do you think would be very likely? very unlikely, or something in the middle. Let's find out. Here is how we can solve this problem. It is actually difficult to solve this problem directly because there are so many possibilities. There could be one person that shares a birthday with you, two people, three people. It is hard to account for all such possibilities. So what we do instead is a very neat trick. It is to pass from this problem to its complement, or the opposite problem. What is the opposite question or complementary question? It is, what is the probability that no one shares the birth state with you? Let's compute that. What's the probability that no one shares the birthday with you? You don't have a birth mate in this class, in other words. Let's make a picture. And that problem will be solved much more easily than, than the original one. Here's you. And here are the other students, 69, 59 students, other than you. We do not know their birthdays. And we can imagine ourselves, we can imagine ourselves in a position that someone of someone who assigns birthdays to the students in any possible way. Let's suppose you can choose birthdays to other students. How many ways are there to choose a birthday for, let's say, student one? Obviously, 365 possible ways to assign the birthday for that student. Now, for each way to assign the birthday to that student, there are still 365 ways to assign the birthday to student number two. So the total number of birthday assignments, the pairs birthdays for these two students is 365 times 365. Now we go on to student three and assign birthday to that student in one of the 365 ways and student four and so on and so forth. There are 59 
students here. So the total number of possible assignments of birthdays to these students is just this long, long product. That's all possible. It's a huge number. It's probably larger than the number of par particles in the universe. This is a number of all possible assignments of birthdays to students in this class. The number of possible lists of birthdays, if you will. But we are interested in the situation that no one shares the birthday with you. How many ways are there to assign birthdays to the students so that, so that no one shares your birthday? Well, as you think about student one, there are 364 ways to assign birthdays to that student other than your own. And for student two, it's 364 too. We just exclude your birthdays, that's all. And student three, until student 59. Let's write this down. The number of ways to assign to assign birthdays to students is 365 times 365 times 365. How many possible? What is this number? 365 multiplied by itself 59 times, which is 365 raised to the power of 365, 59. We compare that to the number of ways to assign birthdays so that no one shares yours. So that no one shares your birthday. And that number is as you can see from above, 364 multiplied by itself 59 times. Let's assume that all possible assignments are equally likely. And that's plausible because as you enter this class of the students, you don't know anyone. You don't know any birthday of any student. So all possible assign, all possible situations, all possible lists of birthdays are equally likely to you. So our standing assumptions that will be that all assignments of birthdays, all of the 365 to the 59, all, all these assignments are equally likely. So what is then the probability that no one shares the birthday with you? It will be the number of valid assignments divided by the number of all assignments. The probability that no one has your birthday is just this ratio of 364 to the 59 divided by 365 to the 59, which is simply this, 364 over 3. 65 raised to the power of 59. We almost solved the problem. We solved the complementary problem, in fact. The opposite to what we needed to solve. We needed to solve the, we needed to find the answer to the opposite question. What is the probability that at least someone has your birthday? This will be just one minus that number, the total probability is almost, is always one. So to find the probability that something does not happen, you subtract the probability that something happens from one. So one minus this to this, and that number you can put in the calculator. I did it. And the answer is approximately 0.15 or 15%. And that's the answer to the birthday problem. So as we enter the class of 60 people or 60 co-workers, there's 15% chance that someone, one or more people in this group, shares birthday with you. Done. That's our first problem. Let me ask you guys. One question, 
actually two questions regarding this problem. First, why couldn't we solve this problem in this simpler way? Solve the direct problem, find the probability that someone shares your birthday in the following way. Someone has your birthday in the following way. Let's just examine students one by one. Each of the 59 students. What is the probability that student one shares your birthday? Well, obviously it's one, it's uh, one divided by 365 because there are 355 days and only one of them is your birthday. And so the probability that that student shares your birthday, that his or her birthday falls on that specific day is one over 366, 365. Then we examine the second student, and the number is, again, 1 over 365. So the probability that one or the other shares your birthday is the sum of these two probabilities. And we go about each and every student, and there are 59 of them, each having probability 1 over 365 of sharing the birthday with you. So the ultimate answer to the original question looks like it should be this. And if you put that in the calculator, which I did too, you would get 0 0.16 or 16%. Notice how remarkably close we are to the actual answer, but not identical to it. So what's going on? The solution must be wrong because it doesn't give you the exact answer. You can think about this by yourself if you stop this video, or I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is as we examine student one and student two, we add these probabilities like this, and we shouldn't be doing that because there is a chance that these two students share the same birthday. So this probabilities of these events overlap. And so we're a little bit overcounting here, uh, which we shouldn't be doing. And that overcounting resulted in just 1% off. So this is a wrong idea, wrong solution. But at this time, your head might, might spin. Uh, why, you know, why is that wrong? And why wasn't this not wrong? Why did we multiply here and here? And why did we divide here? What are these rules of probability that we can use and we use them correctly in the first solution? And what are the rules that we cannot use and we use them incorrectly in the second solution? This will be the main content of the first part of this course as we examine laws of probability and we'll build axiomatic foundations of probability. We'll put you on the firm ground. After the first part of this course, you will be able to immediately recognize what is right and what is wrong in manipulations with, uh, with probabilities. One more remark about this problem is let's redo this problem if we have, instead of 59 students, we have 366 students in the class. Well, that's a pretty big class, calculus maybe. What will be different if we change the number of students? Well, this number will change. Instead of 359, which is 60 minus 1, this will be 366 minus 1, which is 365 here and here and here and here and here and here too. So the answer would be, the answer would differ in just that number. And the probability that, let's say, no one, let's look at the complementary, no one has your birthday. Looking at this number, for 366 students will be this. Agreed? 
Let's examine this number more closely. This is 1 minus 1 over 365 raised to the power 365. Now, if you have studied limits just a little bit, you might recognize a classical limit, one of the most beautiful limits in calculus here, which is um, which gives rise to the to the classical constant, Euler's constant E. This limit is this. If you take one plus something divided by n and raise it to the power n, keep x fixed and let n go to infinity. In other words, make n a very large number. Try it yourself, put it in the calculator. You will see that this limit as n goes to infinity approaches the number e, Euler's constant, which is 2.7, I think 1.8, and so on. And if we apply this limit for x, minus 1, x equal minus 1, then we will see that 1 minus 1 over n to the n for large n is approximately e to the minus 1, which is 1 over e. So here is one example of that limit, not, not exactly the limit because 365 is fixed, but it's a large number. And if we let n be 365, then we will see that this number, the answer, would be approximately 1 over e, which is 0.36 or 36%. This is one example where calculus the, the knowledge of limits in this case, the classical Euler's limit, and probability go hand in hand. Calculus explains a little bit the, the concepts in probability in this case and makes a beautiful appearance here. In this episode, we completed sol the solution of the, our first problem, the hand wavy solution, but we will put it in the first ground, on the firm ground. Please stay with me for the next episode.